Hi boys and girls, summer is here and at last you are all in the last half term of your school year. Time flies by so quickly. We hope that you've enjoyed all the lovely sunny half term weather we've had and that those of you who went away had a wonderful time. If you remember last month we started a new topic for the summer called Mighty Men of God. We learned about a man called Gideon who defeated the whole Midianite army with just 300 men because God was on his side. The story for June is about another mighty man of God who lived over 3,000 years ago and his name was Elijah. Those of you who used to come to our Wednesday night club will remember some of the stories that Jean and Peter told you about him. I wonder how much you can remember. Who was this man called Elijah? Well, he was a prophet who lived in the northern kingdoms of Israel about 900 years before Jesus was born. Elijah, sometimes called Elias, lived during the reign of King Ahab, the seventh king of Israel. Israel had some good kings and some bad kings, but King Ahab was the most wicked king of them all. <laughs> what a reputation to have. But he deserved it. <laughs> Elijah came from Tishbe in Gilead, a small town on the eastern side of the Jordan River. Yes, the same Jordan River that Jesus was baptised in hundreds of years later. Elijah believed in the true God, Yahweh, and that his name actually means, God is my strength. In some respects, Elijah was actually the greatest of all of the prophets since Moses because God used him in a mighty way. King Ahab was married to Jezebel and she was even more wicked than he was. What a pair! Ahab and Jezebel worshipped pagan gods. In fact, Baal worship had become the national religion at the time. The Israelites had once more turned their back on the true God Yahweh and were worshipping statues of Baal made with wood and stone and sometimes even gold. And as you'd expect, God was angry. One day, Elijah went to King Ahab and told him that because of their idol worship, God was going to punish them by sending a drought upon the land. King Ahab, the God of Israel, is angry with you. For the next three and a half years, there is going to be no rain upon this land. Not even a single drop, said Elijah. Now I'm sure you know, boys and girls, that Israel is hot, dry, and without any rain, no crops would grow. There'd be no grass for the cattle, the rivers would dry up, and the people would die due to lack of food and water. Jean told me that when she lived in Africa, she saw dry riverbeds where the rivers had completely dried up and the animals were dying because they had no water to drink. She said it was very sad to see. When Queen Jezebel heard about this, she was very angry and she blamed Elijah for the drought. This is all your fault, she told him angrily. If you had worshipped Baal instead of listening to your god, this would not have happened. Jezebel snarled. Knowing how wicked she was, Elijah was afraid, so he decided to go and hide until her anger had subsided. God told Elijah to go to a place where there was a brook or a small stream called Cherith. Elijah could drink the water from the stream and he would be safe. And the Lord spoke to Elijah. Every morning and evening I will send ravens to bring you bread and meat so that you won't get hungry. These big black birds brought Elijah food in their beaks but did not hurt him. God looked after Elijah just as he looked after the Israelites when they were in the wilderness with Moses. God knew that Elijah was just a man so he looked after him and protected him from the wild animals that roamed nearby. Remember that there was no rain, so after a while, the brook obviously dried up, and Elijah was becoming very thirsty. Remember, he was a prophet who heard from God, so this time God told him to go to a place called Zarephath and to stay there. 
when he came to the gate of the city, Elijah was tired and hungry, so when he saw a lady gathering sticks, he asked her for a drink and something to eat. A poor lady. Her husband had died, and she told Elijah that she only had enough oil and flour to make one small loaf of bread for her and her son before they starved to death. Now this might have seemed very selfish, but Elijah told her first to go and make one little cake for him. And when she did, he told her that until the rains came again, she would never run out of oil or flour, because God would perform a miracle and would provide for her. <laughs> and true to Elijah's word, the woman and her son never went hungry, and neither did Elijah. But one day, something terrible happened. The woman came to Elijah, crying her eyes out. My son, my only son got so sick, and now he's died. The widow woman was breaking her heart. You call yourself a man of God, so why has God taken my son away from me? Elijah gently lifted up the boy and carried him upstairs, laid him on the bed and bent over him. Oh Lord, he prayed, let this child's life return to him. The boy took a deep breath, opened his eyes and sat up. His mother was of course overjoyed. Now I know you truly are a man of God, she said, and that Yahweh, the God you serve, is the only true God. The drought had lasted for three years when God spoke to Elijah and told him to go back to Samaria to see King Ahab. God had told Elijah that he would send rain, but first of all he wanted the people to know once and for all that he alone was God. Elijah told King Ahab to gather the people of Israel and all the prophets of Baal to meet him on top of Mount Carmel. He told them to build an altar while he, uh, to Baal while he built an altar to God. They all got busy gathering their stones and wood to make their altars. There'd been no rain for three years, so the wood was very dry and very crisp. It would burn easily. Elijah told them to go and fetch two bullocks, one for their altar, one for Elijah's. But they were not to put any fire underneath it. No, no, no. Their gods were going to provide the fire. When it was almost midday and the sun was high in the sky, Elijah gathered the people together and said, Now... Let he who is the true God set fire to his altar. The priests of Baal lifted up their arms and called on their God to send fire. Oh, Baal, hear us, they shouted. Great and mighty Baal, show your great power. Send down fire upon this altar. They shouted even louder and danced, waving their arms in the air. Hours passed by, and nothing happened. The great fire remained unlit, and the prophets began to shout even louder, Oh, great Baal, hear us and send down fire to consume this calf. Still nothing happened. The people became frustrated and began cutting themselves with stones and knives in the hope that if Baal saw their blood flow, he would answer their cry. Perhaps, mocked Elijah, perhaps Baal is asleep. Or perhaps he's gone on a journey somewhere. Then he ordered his men to go down to the sea and bring back as many jars of water as they could carry. Elijah told them to pour the water on the wood on his altar, so it was absolutely soaking wet and impossible to burn. The prophets of Baal must have thought he was absolutely crazy. Has Elijah gone mad? They muttered to themselves, still crying for Baal to send down his fire. Elijah knelt down, raised his hands towards heaven and cried out, Lord God of heaven, I ask you to send fire, so that people will know that you alone are the only true God, and they may turn their hearts back to you. Instantly, the pile of sodden logs roared into flames, and within seconds, the calf, the wood, and the stones were burned to blackened ashes. 
the people were so afraid they fell on their faces and cried out, The Lord is God! The Lord! He is God! Elijah climbed up to the very top of the mountain and put his head between his knees and cried out to God to send rain. He told his servant to look out to the sea and there was not a single rain cloud at all. Seven times Elijah sent him to look and the seventh time he saw a tiny little cloud. No bigger than a man's hand. If you hold your hand up to the sky. Only only small. This was the first sign that God was going to send the rain. Go quickly to Ahab and tell him the rains have come. Almost before Elijah had spoken, the sky grew black. The rain came lashing down and a great wind arose and blew the rain across the whole country. God had kept his promise, just as he always does. King Ahab jumped off his horse and, f- and rode off to tell Jezebel that all of the things that Elijah had done. But of course we know, boys and girls, that it was not Elijah who'd done these things. It was God. And when Jezebel heard what God had done, that all the prophets of Baal had been killed, she was so angry. She began to hunt down all the prophets of God and had them killed. She hated Elijah and threatened to have him put to death. Elijah was so afraid he ran away to a place called Beersheba, which was in the desert. I wonder, children, have you ever run away or tried to run away from something? Perhaps you were afraid of something that was about to happen, or maybe you were in some sort of trouble for something you'd done and you didn't want to face the consequences. Well, if you have, you will understand exactly how Elijah felt. His problems felt so big and so overwhelming that he just didn't want to live anymore. He just didn't know what he was going to do. After he'd been walking in the hot sun all day, he sat down under a juniper tree to rest. He was tired, hungry and thirsty, but there was no food or water nearby. What was he going to do? He could do nothing but fall asleep from sheer exhaustion. All of a sudden, Elijah jumped. Someone touched him on the shoulder. Then he heard a voice, Elijah, sit up and eat. Elijah thought he must be dreaming. He sat up, rubbed his eyes in front of him. There was a small fire with a cake baking on the coals and the jug of water. Ah, Water had never tasted so good. God had sent an angel to look after him and provide for all of his needs. God looked after Elijah for 40 days and 40 nights until he came to a cave on Mount Horeb where he stayed and met with God. He told God he was afraid to go back home because he felt he was the only one who still loved God and that everyone was against him. (laughs) Have you ever felt like that, boys and girls, that you're the only one in your family or your school who loves God and nobody understands you? It can be very hard sometimes. Well, Elijah knew what that was like. He went outside the cave and tried to listen for God's voice. He heard the wind whistling across the mountain. It was so strong that pieces of rock were crashing down the mountainside. Elijah listened, but God's voice was not in the wind. God sent an earthquake, but his voice was not in the earthquake. He sent fire down from heaven, but his voice was not in the fire. Elijah went and sat at the entrance of his cave, put his cloak over his head, and he just sat there very quietly. And then he heard a still, small voice. It was God. It was God. Elijah, do not be afraid. Go back home. For there is someone waiting to meet you. You see children sometimes we want to hear what God is saying to us but because we're always so busy and the world around us is so noisy we just don't take the time to be still and sit in God's presence. 
Sometimes God will speak to us when we pray or when we read his word, but sometimes just like Elijah, God wants us to go to a quiet place, to sit still and be quiet and just think about him. We might not hear an actual voice like Elijah did, but we can still know God's presence with us. He is the same God today as he was then. Elijah did what God had told him and began his journey back home. On the way, he met a man called Elisha, who was ploughing the fields with his oxen. Elisha must have heard that it was Elijah, a great man of God, because he ran towards him and asked if he could follow him. Perhaps he'd heard about some of the supernatural things God had done. Perhaps the little boy who had come back to life had told him, or maybe he had heard how God had poured fire from heaven and sent the rain. Whatever it was, he wanted to know more about Elijah's God. Elisha went back, kissed his mother and his father, said goodbye to his family, and followed after Elijah. Little did he know that God had a very special plan for him too. Elisha went everywhere with Elijah and saw God perform even more miracles, even sending down fire from heaven to defeat his enemies. What an amazing God. Next month, children, we'll find out how awesome he is. Isn't it wonderful how God took care of Elijah? In the book of Daniel, chapter 11, uh, verse 32, it says, The people who know their God will be strong and do great things. Elijah trusted in God and relied upon his strength, not his own strength. God knew this and he blessed him and used him to do great and mighty things. I wonder... Can we be like Elijah? Can we trust in God to look after us and use us to do great and mighty things for him? Don't miss the next part of the story in July because something extraordinary is about to happen. But let's pray. Father God, I just pray for every boy and girl who's listening. Help us, Lord, have the faith Elijah had where we don't trust our strength, but we trust yours. And Lord, help us hear that still, small voice to take time out and to listen to you. Give us courage, like Elijah had, to make a stand for you, even when we feel like we're the only one. Bless every boy and girl. Amen. Amen. Well, have a wonderful month. And uh, we shall see you again in July for the next New Life Kids.